Welcome to Diversitas, a podcast at the crossroads of diversity, business, and culture. We are glad to see you again, audience. And today we have a very special guest. We have Sean Gibbons, who is principal of CI Solutions, LLC. CI Solutions is a full service boutique commercial interiors firm that has really been serving clients in Philadelphia since 2009. Over the course of its history, CI Solutions has completed projects in the commercial area in excess of 750,000 square feet. She also recently founded another business, Homeworks, which is tailored to consumers who work from home, which is obviously what we're all doing these days. Homeworks offers a selection of ergonomic products focused on providing comfort, health, and productivity to the remote worker or professional. Today, we're going to speak to Sean about her entrepreneurial journey and the transition to home-focused work environment happening in our culture. So with that introduction, welcome, Sean. We really appreciate you coming on today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So first of all, tell us about uh, CI Solutions. What does it do? What kind of client does it service? Talk to us about that. So CI Solutions, um, I founded about 14 years ago. And since that time, we are focused on providing interior services, furniture, design services, space planning to, for large to medium-sized uh, companies throughout the continental United States. Um, we are kind of sitting on the client side of the table, navigating what can be um, a rather opaque landscape of commercial furniture. People don't realize it, but if your background is procurement or facilities, that doesn't necessarily mean that you understand the bevy of manufacturers that are available to you and what different types of product um, will work in the best situations um, for what it is that your departments are desiring and how they desire to function. And who's so we typical, really, what? I'm, I'm sorry, who's your typical, tell me who your typical client would be. Um, so, I mean, the website <laughs> lists like 12 industries, but right. the ones that we really concentrate on um, insurance companies, offices, um, banks, we are the, um, we are the pr premier, premier uh, furniture provider for several insurance companies. And as they go and grow throughout the, uh, the country, we go with them. And so if they're opening different satellite branches or different headquarters in different locations throughout the country, we are right there supporting their facilities teams and getting these offices stood up and occupied by their team members. And we're often dealing with pretty um, specific deadlines. Right. So, you know, it can get hairy running a project at a distance, but we've gotten pretty good at it over the years. How did your professional journey lead to this particular area? Like, how did you, how did you find that? I have to tell you, I love that question. Because for every young woman who is out there at, you know, 28 thinking, oh, I don't really see my path or this I thought was going to work out or, oh, you know what, I thought I was going to be good at this and I, then it didn't work. I didn't, I did not um, really start to work inside of the commercial uh, furniture industry until I was about 40. Mm. and. Well, I guess I just gave it all away. But and then uh, shortly after I started CI Solutions. But prior to that, all of the experiences that God had allowed me to have really led me to that space at about 40 years old when I was ready to take everything running my own business at, you know, probably 18 was the first one. And what kind of business that, did you have at 18? That's that's pretty young to have a business. I had a nail salon. See, couldn't get more diverse than that. So I started off running somebody else's um, clothing business when I was in high school around 14. 
then move to the nail salon. So what that told me, or what it would have told my uh, self looking back is that I had that entrepreneurial energy and spirit and tenacity, even as a youngster. And then I realized though, that I needed to have that kind of intellectual support and really being taught to think. And so that's what college provided me. I was a psych major, also mm -hmm. had nothing to do with what I've, I've ended up building. Right. But each one of these things has led to, um, and then I got into the real estate game, but not as an agent, but working for um, a new construction firm. And I worked for them, love that job. I have to tell you, I was just having a conversation with somebody not too long ago about working for other people and how most entrepreneurs don't have that tolerance. You're either working for yourself or you're unhappy. But that particular job gave us enough entrepreneurial um, expression so that when we came into this completely blank canvas of a community, then we were given the, um, the, the accountability to be able to go in and to build things and to be as creative as we needed to be to market the community, to grow the community, to engage with the neighbors. I love that job. But um, uh, unfortunately, the recession didn't love us back. And <laughs> at some point, um, I found myself really trying to figure out how can I bring all of these disparate kind of skills um, and aptitudes together. And it all intersected right around the commercial furniture. furniture. Let, me ask you, let me ask you this, because you talk with, you know, even when you talk about that particular job, there is kind of a sparkle in your eye when you, when you talk about the creative piece, the creative aspect of it. What is the thing about being an entrepreneur that you love the most that that brings you that brings that passion out of you um i can only speak for myself um but i feel as if <laughs> i feel as if i am pregnant with a concept or an idea and it just it grows and it develops and it grows and it develops but in some ways it kind of begins to take over and occupy my every thought, every waking moment until I can see it come into some real um, structured formation. And so that thing that propels me or compels me to, to start with a concept and see it turn into something real and tangible, it is my life's blood. Mm. It, is, it is so interesting um, because I know other people do it for different reasons. Right. But for right. me, it is really about the thing that doesn't exist, bringing it into existence. And honestly, it's better to do it with a team. Like right. if you have a good team of folks around you, which I did at that job that I referred to. Um, and now with CI, um, I am surrounded with um, a great team and great stakeholders well, um, and our what, clients. What was your concept? So taking that a step a step further, what was your what was the thing that drove you to build CI Solutions to what CI Solutions is today? Right. It was a it was a kernel of of an idea. What was that kernel of an idea? that you wanted to really grow and develop into what, what it is today? I would love to say that all those 14 years ago, I had a vision and I didn't, I really didn't. I was really by some much more forward thinking gentlemen um, who realized how, the, who realized the lack of diversity the absolute lack of representation of people of color and women of color. Um, and as I worked in their, um, in their organizations as a salesperson for another group, they would come to me and they would explain a little bit about what their organization's initiatives were and how it would be such a wonderful thing if I would have the courage to go out on my own, to step out on my own 
and be willing to step into a gap that there really wasn't anybody there. And it's funny because there's this conference um, in Chicago and it's really for all of the interior, commercial interior um, firms to come in and see new product. It's a product uh, parade, mm -hmm. it's called Neocon. And it is, it, it was, it's, it's huge. I mean, it, you know, it's been impacted by COVID like everything. But I remember the first time that I was able to afford to go there, because there's that. Um, and I was just dumbstruck by the fact that I was the only woman of color in any position. Mm -hmm. And that's, and it just, it was amazing. Thousands of people, a sea of human beings. Mm -hmm. And there was like me, the little brown person there and everyone else. And so, you know, I believe that, you know, I was just there in June. Um, I believe that the industry has improved, but it hasn't improved that much. And so when you ask me what put me on this road, right. there were other people who were like, this industry is definitely missing the, go ahead. Cause you so let me follow up with that. So that's what put you on the road, but what kept you on the road? Because there's getting on the road and then there's staying on the road and being in that business for 14 years speaks to a level of perseverance that oftentimes does not happen in entrepreneurial endeavors for whatever reason. Um, so what, what kept you, what kept you going with CI Solutions? Well, first of all, I love it. It's my baby. Um, and also I felt like I hit upon a particular model that gave me a sense of purpose. Mm. So because we couldn't do all the things that the big boys do, um, and because we didn't necessarily want to do all the things that, like I had no interest in trucking. I had no interest in having a warehouse full of guys putting together furniture. I wanted to sit at the table with the client in an advisory capacity to have a conversation about how to best um, insert best practices, um, the best concepts for design to meet that client's need. And so because we are so client focused and because we are kind of there to help them work and to make their jobs easier, mm. then it was possible to do it in, in, the, in the way that wasn't overwhelming um, for, for CI. And then that mm. gave us a chance to really grow. The other thing is nobody does this by, by yourself. There have been so many ups and downs, bumps and bruises, disappointments, disappointments in myself. Mm -hmm. And so there have been people who have come along me at, 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 around me at every step, a hedge of protection. And those people have supported me. They have provided business. They have provided credit lines. Like, and not necessarily in because, you know, it's not always in the most typical way. Um, but nonetheless, they showed up when I needed them. And so that's- so, so now you are at a place where CI is certainly more mature than it was when it started. Uh, and you came up with a new idea, a new business idea. Um, tell us about Homeworks. So Homeworks Well, actually, we, we shortened it because it was cuter, but Homeworks Well really is exactly that. It is our way of reaching out to a community of home workers and assisting them as they try to figure out how to work well from home. And it sounds like a really kind of, I don't know, unnecessary conversation, but as it turns out, it's a very necessary conversation because the the since 2020, where everyone kind of was forced into this, you know, um, home working situation, mm -hmm. we found out that we were not equipped or prepared to have everybody come into the house. Kids have the homework. Moms have their responsibilities. Everybody's doing it from dining room tables, kitchen tables, living room floors. You know, it just it was it, it was a mess and it was stressful. 
And that is just from the product perspective. What has been more interesting to me in this journey that we have, have taken, because it's really just an evolution out of CI Solutions. So mm-hmm. we started that journey uh, 14 years ago. And then in 2020, that took us down a different road, a different path, where we really started. We have actually, you know what, I, can I go back for just a second? Sure. We have been providing support to our large clients in their HR um, capacities. So we had already started to support home workers through CI. Tell the audience what that means. When you say we are we are we have been supporting or we have um, what does that mean exactly? So we were making sure that if for whatever reason people had to work from home, either it was a requirement of the job or maybe they were going through something and they couldn't come into the office or whatever, that they had the proper ergonomic tools so that doing tasks, repetitive tasks, would not negatively impact their bodies. Tools like what? Tools like um, adjustable height tables that allow you to to stand at times and work, but then also um, allow you to work. And, you know, people are all happy about adjustable height tables, but an adjustable height table that you stand at constantly throughout the day is as bad as sitting. Mm -hmm. The idea is that there should be a balance and a symmetry in how you approach your body's work throughout the day. So doing any one thing too much is the problem. It's not the sitting and it's not the standing. It's just not giving yourself um, the the diversity of how you work. Let me ask you this. So you 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 the adjustable height tables is one thing. Now you made reference earlier to like people sitting at their dining room tables and and sitting on their dining room chairs and doing work all day, which you know, has is a lot of people's experience, right? Yes. During the during the uh, the COVID era, they they this is they had laptops. They plopped their laptops on their dining room table and they work. What do you provide that makes that particular experience? I mean, you talked about the 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 adjustable high tables. What else do you provide that makes that experience better what what didn't they have that they should have this is the thing what we did learn in 2020 um that was different than the experience that i was necessarily um the experience that we initially had by um assisting these companies help their workers who were home through the hr process what we didn't what we learned in 2020 is that every person is working under a different environment, a different strain. And you can't just cookie cut these answers. And also the the disparity, honestly, in, you know, when people have enough money to have a second bedroom or they have a guest room, as opposed to the person who's working in an efficiency and they have, you know, a significant other and sometimes even a child or those people who just, there's just not that much room in their mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. And so now all of a sudden, what you have to do is carve out a space of work so that work doesn't overwhelm the rest of your life mm-hmm. because then that's not emotionally healthy. So then we started like really doing research and deep dives into the connection to productivity to having a very specific and dedicated office space, Mm -hmm. even if it's just a corner. So some of our products that we didn't necessarily care about, you know, three years ago, but now they are very agile and they're very flexible. And there are things that people can pull out and then put away. But during that time that you're pulling it out, it defines to yourself Mm -hmm. and to the rest of whoever is sharing that space with you that mom is at work, you're focused on work and everybody can see it. But then when you put it away, then work doesn't get to just continue to intrude into your personal life either. And Mm -hmm. so it sends cues to that human being that, hey, there's a time and place for everything under the sun. And so that is what we're really trying to help people do, not just by providing the products, but encouraging the healthy habits 
and the processes, encouraging people to be productive, more productive through organization, um, through even in terms of the things, small products that bring you joy or remind you to when you should stand up. I mean, something as simple as, and I guess I shouldn't say this because you can get it on Amazon, but a timer to sit on the side of your desk mm -hmm. because people will often get into, especially now, Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting after, you can go four or five hours and not even realize that you haven't moved. And so sometimes those little cues to remind you, hey, I've been at this for an hour and a half. That's my, that's the it. And I need to get up and I need to do 15 minutes of walking around the apartment or just do some mild stretches at my desk, whatever it is. Because the thing about it is you are your greatest gift. You're not going to get a better gift than you. And work and your professional, Im the, the impact that your profession has on you is only one part of you. But you have to care for all of you in a holistic manner. Right. And that's right. what Homeworks is really, really about. So that's how you get to Homeworks well, because yes. really what you're trying to do is to provide um, your customer base with tools to be able to work well from home. Right. Tools and practices, because there are a lot of really smart people out there with some interesting and it doesn't it's not one size fit all, but certainly with interesting practices that really will enable you to work and enhance your homework experience. So I, if I come in, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm Joe Consumer and I come in to uh, your homeworks. OK, by the way, where is homeworks? So we're in Chestnut Hill. Our, our okay. first location, you hear me first, because there's going to be more. But right, right now, our first location just opened up a week ago. Right. Um, and we're um, in the 8100 block of Germantown Avenue. So I come into I come into your your store and I say, you know, I'm Joe Consumer. I have, um, you know, a little corner in the kitchen where I like to be as productive as I possibly can be. Um, I, all I have is a, a, a corner. I don't have anything in that corner right now. I, I have been working off of my, my kitchen table, but I want to invest in some, some product and some, some other stuff, whatever you can give to me that will make that corner the best corner it can be for me to work. What do, what can you give me or what can you offer me, um, in terms of product and service so that that can happen for me? So there's a, an initial consultation where we just try to figure out, you know, what your pain points are, um, how you've been working, um, and then really understanding, you know, what your day-to-day -day tasks are. And then from there, I mean, that is the scenario you described is probably one of the most typical. Mm -hmm. um, and so we absolutely have products that will span from efficiency apartments to, you know, multi-room McMansions. So, you know, we okay. definitely have something, but it kind of really starts again um, with just understanding. It's funny, it's not that dissimilar. We go into a company or corporation and we sit with stakeholders, we sit, sit with um, facilities people, but the most important people we sit with are department heads because the department head is able to define, to articulate how, uh, what the goals of that department are, how they desire for their team members to function, how they best interact. So we do the same thing with the individual person and say, hey, you know, sir, what is it that you want to get out of your work day? How long is your work day? Mm -hmm. How many meetings do you typically have? You know, um, who else is working in your space? It's all these types of questions. Mm -hmm. And then honestly, some of the questions really get into what people have been struggling with as well. Um, and really, we started a conversation called Homeworkology. Based well, talk, on talk to us about that. What is that? What is that? So homeworkology is really just a series of conversations that that was born out of us really wanting to understand what people needed in terms of support. 
because we were talking about how we were going to enhance their homework experience without really knowing the real nitty gritty. Like I knew the homework experience of some of the directors and the managers and people I knew, but I didn't necessarily know the homework mm -hmm. experience of, you know, the single mom with two kids who are now work like that's a whole different kind of conversation. Right. And so we started, we realized that we really had more in common in some of the things that were frustrating about the homework experience, but also there was a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. And so we started having conversations and we've invited people from the most diverse backgrounds all over different industries to sit with us for about 20 minutes mm -hmm. and just talk to us about what it was, what it is like to work either from home completely or in hybrid or to go back and forth or when you, you know, just whatever your experiences were. And for sure, we've had some really, really interesting questions about mm -hmm. how working well from home or not can really impact your overall well-being, your right. emotional well-being. Right. Um, and can that you give me an example really of that? Can you, can you give me an example of like one of the people that you've talked to? Sure. About their experience? Sure. So we have absolutely had um, conversations that dealt with isolation. Mm. We have had conversations with single people where one of their, and they, you know, it's funny how you don't miss your water until the well runs dry, but they didn't even realize how much of their social life was based on the after work happy hours or the engagement that they were getting around the water cooler or whatever. And then having to kind of figure out how to navigate depression, how to do things and kind of take control back from what the pandemic sort of took away from all of us. And at the end of the day, people started to realize that even in the circumstances, we still have choices and we have choices to find whatever way we can to connect, to find the best practices that we can, to find online connections, to figure out you know, what groups are available, what products are available, because there is support. Homeworks Well is definitely there to support people, but it's not the only support. And that's why having a community of home workers is so essential. And that's really what homeworkology focuses on that community. Um, who can you, is there a, is there a typical, I hate to use that word, but is there a, a, a typical consumer that you're looking to attract to homework? So, I guess I shouldn't say no, because that's the answer that as a business person, I'm supposed to say. But the reality of it is that I am more aware than ever before that no matter what your space, whatever industry you're in that allows you to work part, part of the time or full time from home, you probably need support in doing so. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, you know, one of the biggest calls that homework that homeworks has gotten is from dorm students, from, mm -hmm. from college students. Um, you know, because there's a there's a, there are other aspects, design aspects. So there's color theory. Like people were never as aware of the absence or the, the introduction of light and how it improved their mood and productivity as they work. The various colors that will enhance productivity. Like there are all of these things that get applied depending on you know, how deep a dive we're going into your space. Right. But right. the thing is, it's all there. We offer all of it. It's just a matter of you know, how motivated you are, and, you know, the other thing is, you know, we have midpoint to kind of more elevated price products. And that's probably the biggest challenge for some folks. Right, right. So uh, I want to switch gears a little bit um, get back to your experience. So now you have homeworkology, you have CI solutions. 
you are running multiple businesses. So how do you how do you do it? How do you keep that all going? Like how do you how do you do that? What do you do on a day to day basis? How do you make that work for for you and for your businesses? So I start pretty much every morning um, in prayer. Mm -hmm. um, I pray. I pray. I journal and I meditate. That is probably what is necessary to keep me grounded. Um, and then it also allows me to be quiet, which doesn't happen too often throughout the day. <laughs> and so being quiet then causes me to listen. And sometimes um, I can be on the wrong path. I can be motivated by all the wrong things, but in those spaces, it allows me to course correct fairly quickly. Um, and I realized that, you know, while I started CI Solutions pretty much by myself um, with, you know, the help of the stakeholders and whatnot, but there was, there was no room for employees. And now I have a whole team of people where we pretty much have kind of pulled together to pull homeworks into existence. Mm. And so that was a co-founding moment. Mm -hmm. And it, there, there probably hasn't been anything more gratifying than I've experienced than to stand there on that first night opening with, you know, my team members. Um, and just, you know, I know one of them hugged me and she was just like, I can't even believe that we're here. Um, but when did this come, when did this, when did this idea, like, I, you know, I know you talked earlier about the fact that you were essentially providing a similar type service um, um, to uh, through HR, through the HR departments of your clients. But again, you talked about before how, you know, you get these kind of kernels of ideas and then they start to germinate and grow. And then, you know, you apply, you know, you just being, you become consumed yes. with, making this thing happen out of nothing, right? Right. So what was the impetus for for this particular kernel? Um, and, and when did you get it? When did you get this impetus, this inspiration? So I got the inspiration where I get a lot of my inspirations when I'm brushing my teeth in the morning. Uh, another, another moment where I can't talk, I, I swear, when I'm quiet, good things happen. Mm. Um, but, you know, so it's about two years in the making. And I really think what, what triggered for me is watching the women that I work with manage and adjust, and in some cases struggle with what, has, what was put on us. And I realized that the amount of love and support and concern that I had for them um, in making sure that, you know, and I, I should be ashamed to say this, but it, it took me a minute to realize how many of the women that work for CI were working in terrible chairs mm. or sitting at dining room tables. Mm. And I'm like, wait, y'all, we know better than this, right? Mm. Don't we? And so I just realized it, it, it hit me that hey, if we who are providing these things in a professional capacity to organizations every day don't have the wherewithal or the, the awareness to make sure that we take care of self, right? then how many other people are in, in that same position? Yeah. And that's really what it was. And that's why, you know, homework's well, that's why homeworkology, that's why all of it, because people don't realize that your professional space takes up a third of your daily existence. Mm -hmm. If this is the last day that God gives you, a third of it is going to be taken up by your professional existence. So how do we want to do that well? Right. So homeworks well is really at its core, it sounds to me, about self-care. Is yes. that is that accurate? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to have to borrow that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Thank so, you. So, um, you know, you 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 talked about growing CI from just you to now you have a team. Can you talk to us just a little bit about 
your leadership style? How would you describe your leadership style? We often talk about leadership on this show. What would you describe that to be? I think you would be better off asking <laughs> those women that I work with. Mm. Because I think I get a different answer. But no, seriously, um, I try to empower people to do their. Am I allowed to curse? I no, try to empower. You are not. People, oh, okay. So I try to empower people to do their jobs. Um, I try to give them the tools to the extent that, you know, because we are a micro business, we're a small business. Mm -hmm. um, but to the extent that they come to me and, you know, say we need this or we need that. We try to provide it. Um, I'm definitely an advocate of continuing education, making sure that our team members, to the extent that they desire to layer on certifications or layer on whatever it is that they think would enhance um, their process, then I am, I am all about that support. But if I really like, I am a, the visionary, like the big picture thinker, um, but then in various silos of expertise, they sort of run independent modules. And that is probably impacted by that job when I was working for the new construction um, company mm. that I probably took from that. Awesome. So I have a couple of rapid fire questions that I'm gonna to pose to you. So um, let's learn a little bit more about you personally. One word that describes you. Energetic. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can see that. Best piece of advice you ever received? To listen. Mm. Biggest failure. Um, early on, there have been, oh, I only have one word. No, you can. Uh, early on, there were team members who I feel like I was like really um, focused on growing the company and I should have been focused on the people and the company would grow. Mm -hmm. And now I know that if I focus on my people, the growth will come because right. they will grow. Right. I just need to focus on them. Book that's had the biggest impact on you. Strength to strength. Mm. Um, and finally, your favorite musical artist. Johnny Mathis. Oh, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Now look, I know I dated myself early, earlier, but Johnny Mathis don't have nothing to do with me. That's like from my parents and they just passed it on. I'm just, I want to clarify. Okay, if, if that's what you want to leave us with, we're, we'll accept yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sean Gibbons, thank you for being part of our show today. We greatly appreciate your time. We know that you are a very, very busy person and that um, and we just are thankful. To that. This was fun. Thank you for having me on. I enjoyed it. And to our audience, Thank you for being a part of this discussion. We look forward to continuing it and keeping it going. Until next time, take care.